Aya Kui. My name's Safe Sanusia Zeus. I'm talking about my show at Part 2 Gallery that's open right now. We use these. Um, but there's always been art and other... We I use just... these. <laughs> yeah, I was never, like, really interested in art growing up. And then I didn't become really interested in art until I was a teenager. My dad had always been invested in art. I'd grown up seeing basket weavings from the tribe and all of our cultural stuff, which doesn't fall into art because it's more like functional use stuff, but there is a lot of craft and like craftsmanship in that. And then I grew up surrounded by the tapestries and stuff my family would bring back from Arab countries or Muslim countries. So like those kind of visual iconographies are definitely like in my head and have helped build that up. Um, and I went to art school for illustration and got really invested in just like painting and the alternative conversations that exist there. And then also like really, uh, I mean like at the time it was angry, but like really invested in like the lack of representation and voices that existed. So like that really got me motivated to be like making work that I feel like, I feel like speaks to my larger cultural backgrounds. The lunar calendar connects a lot of indigenous communities, and before the Gregorian calendar, people used the lunar calendar. And it also connects both of my cultural backgrounds, because like Islam uses the lunar calendar as well. So there's a way for me to connect those backgrounds. And it also offered me a way to like kind of utilize the whole entire space on the wall. I wanted the paintings to start kind of in a cooler palette, but still feeling the warmth, because I feel like now in California or in Northern California, it's so different from when I grew up and there isn't this dis very distinct seasonal change. There's this just warmth going on the whole year. I don't know, there's like a very distinct way of experiencing the fires when you've seen like the communities impacted and feeling the wind like blow through. And I wanted the paintings to feel like different aspects of actually like having like physically felt those spaces and there is a transition of different like painting styles and handling and for me those all function in the different ways that like the kind of earth is dealing with the f new fire season within california let habibi moya thank you shukran yeah these paintings i wanted to function in different ways in the way that the cycles are happening throughout the year, so there's some distinctions that happen. But also, like, I think that painting is a really emotional experience for me, so there is, there is those moments where I'm, like, getting really loose, and there's gesture, and I need to, like, let stuff out, and there are also moments where I want the painting to feel like that, but also be really, like, refined in how that was constructed. So I think that that conversation for me exists in, like, different ways. I think that within a lot of things, there's like different cultural understandings of how things function. So fire was villainized by like settlers that came early because they thought that indigenous people were trying to destroy the land and they didn't realize that there was a relationship to the land and stewarding the land. So fire isn't a bad thing for us because we realize that there is like a necessity for it and there can be healthy relationships with things outside of just like the need to always control everything. Um, and there can be ways to like kind of function within trying to participate rather than extract, which I feel like traditional ecological knowledge points to. Woodworking is a big part of Yurok culture, Karuk culture. Uh, our canoes are carved out of redwood. A lot of our tools are made of redwood. And then redwood is also like a big segue in between the effects of colonization for me and that like redwoods used to just take up most of the reservation and now they've been just completely just removed. The imparting wisdom part is that like a lot of Yurok culture believes that the redwoods did hold stories and they're so old that they're able to like they were with the people and like if you're seeing how nature is functioning within community outside of being a separate thing, like, they're part of us. So, like, they are holding their own stories, and they are telling their own stories. And then to just have them be in, like, scrap yards or, like, in piles waiting to get chipped for me was just, like, so heartbreaking. So taking the wood was just a way to kind of 
reclaim it and give it time that it deserved rather than just getting chipped up. The show for me was largely about land stewardship and acknowledging our our necessity to take care of the land and be part of that and all the different ways that that functions. And the title Everything Has a Name touches on that as well and that like we have a responsibility to the land and there's a relationship to everything beyond just not knowing the names of the plants we see every day and it's important to try to take care of the land. So for me, the paintings, the differing ways they function in the iconography are just ways of representing that. So there's the plants which show up and are just kind of a way of like, again, pointing towards the necessity to steward. And then there's fire that comes up for me throughout the paintings as another way of like creating the connection that we need to steward the land, but then also like harm is being caused by fire because of a lack of stewarding the land. And I just think that like the paintings can function as art and be malleable. And I think that art can be malleable and the need to have everything be cohesive, like isn't something that exists in nature and everything can be different. Paintings can be different, sculptures can be different. And I think a larger conversation can still exist within that. It's like I'm talking about imperialism and then my kids like waxing us or back. So it's just like I get the... <laughs> Well, it's like the reality, you know? The loss of it all, yeah. <laughs> you know? Just leave it in the back.